Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about adding and subtracting polynomials, which is a topic that very frequently appears in the Mathematics Knowledge subtest of both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the pre-screening Internet Delivered Computer Adaptive Test, that is the PICAT. More specifically, I'm going to work out 10 practice test questions that should closely mirror what you should expect to see in both the ASVAB and PICAT. And in order to get the most from this video, you'll want to pause the video after I read a practice test question, attempt to work that practice test question out on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As a quick reminder, you are not permitted to use a calculator or a reference sheet on the actual ASVAB or PICAT. So as you work your way through these practice test questions, try not to use any of those resources. Finally, I want to say this. If you can answer seven or more of these questions correctly on your own, chances are you have this topic pretty much mastered. And for that reason, I would move on to studying something else. Uh, that said, if you answered six or fewer of these questions correctly, that means you need some more practice. And for that reason, I want to mention this. I put together a playlist called Algebra Review for the ASVAB and PICAT. That playlist has more than 500 practice test questions. And as you can see, the second video in that playlist is about combining like terms and adding and subtracting polynomials. In other words, if you answer six or fewer of these questions correctly, I would encourage you to go to my Algebra Review playlist. In addition, I would strongly encourage you to find my video called Combining Like Terms and Adding and Subtracting Polynomials and go through it. Of course, I'll put links to both my Algebra Review Playlist as well as my other video on Combining Like Terms and Adding and Subtracting Polynomials in the description of this video for you. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the practice test questions. All right, so uh, this first question says this. Simplify 2x minus 1 fourth x. So we have 2x minus 1 fourth x. There are actually two approaches you can take to solving this one. One of the approaches is very quick and easy, but it requires you to be good with mental math. The other approach requires you to fall back on your skills with subtracting fractions. So let's do the easy approach first. Uh, 2x minus 1 fourth x. The first thing you want to say to yourself is, are these like terms, and therefore can I subtract them? Well, like terms have the same letter variables raised to the same power. In this case, we have the letter variable x raised to the first power. Then we have the letter variable x raised to the first power. All right, so those are like terms, which means we can subtract them. You should say 2 minus 1 fourth is going to be 1 and 3 fourths. That's 1 and 3 fourths x. And you should be able to say to yourself this. Look, my answer choices are expressed as improper fractions, which means I have to take this 1 and 3 fourths x and express it as an improper fraction. Of course, that's fairly easy to do. Your denominator is not going to change. Uh, to write your numerator of your improper fraction, you do 1 times 4, which is 4, plus 3, which is 7. So this is... 7 over 4x, which is answer choice B. That's how I would solve this one. Again, sometimes working with fractions is very simple and straightforward. That said, let's say you couldn't do the mental math there and you had to solve this one the long way. Well, you have 2x minus 1 fourth x. Uh, you should be saying to yourself, well, this looks like a subtraction problem involving fractions. Uh, and in light of that, I'm going to write 2 as a fraction by placing it over 1. In order to subtract these two fractions, they have to have the same denominators. Here I have a denominator of 1, and here I have a denominator of 4. So I'm going to have to rewrite either one or both of these fractions with a common denominator. Common denominator between 1 and 4 is going to be 4. To write 1 as 4, I would have to multiply it by 4, and I also have to do that to its numerator. Again, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 
as a fraction with a denominator of 4 is 8 over 4x. Again, 8 divided by 4, of course, is 2. This one already has a denominator of 4, so we'll just bring it down as is. Now, it's pretty obvious that we're just subtracting these fractions. Again, when you subtract fractions, your denominator doesn't change, but you do 8 minus 1. 8 minus 1, of course, is 7, so this is 7 over 4x, which is answer choice B. So regardless of how you solve this one, uh, you get the same result. Uh, many people can solve this one without having to do much work whatsoever. That said, if you're good with fractions, you could have also solved this one, albeit the long way. All right, so number two says, what is the sum of 2x squared plus 5xy plus 4y squared and negative xy plus 2y squared minus 6x squared? So in case it's not obvious, uh, when we have a group of algebraic terms like this, we refer to that group as a polynomial. So this 2x squared plus 5xy plus 4y squared is a polynomial. And this negative xy plus 2y squared minus 6x squared is also a polynomial. And in this case, we're just adding two polynomials together. Again, sum means add together. So let's go ahead and work on doing that algebraically. It's very easy to add polynomials. All you do is copy them down and combine them with an addition sign. So we have 2x squared plus 5xy plus 4y squared. And to that, we're adding the second polynomial. So that's going to be plus negative xy plus 2y squared minus 6x squared. All right, so you can see that in summing these two polynomials, we get one very long algebraic expression. Now our task is to go through this algebraic expression and combine our like terms to simplify this. And what are like terms? Like terms have the same letter variables raised to the same power. So let's look at 2x squared. We have the letter variable x raised to the second power. Its corresponding like term is going to be x raised to the second power. We can see that that is right here, x raised to the second power. 2x squared minus 6x squared is going to be negative 4x squared. Now that I've combined those like terms, I'm going to go ahead and cross them out. Next, we have 5x raised to the first power, y raised to the first power. So its corresponding like term is going to have x raised to the first power, y raised to the first power. We can see that that is right there. 5xy minus xy is going to be plus 4xy. Now that we've combined those, let's go ahead and cross them out. And then finally, we have 4y squared and 2y squared. Again, that's y raised to the second power. y raised to the second power, so we know those are like terms. 4y squared plus 2y squared is going to be plus 6y squared. Let's go ahead and cross those out. So when we add these two polynomials together, we get negative 4x squared plus 4xy plus 6y squared, which we can see is answer choice A in this case. All right, so that is that one. All right, so uh, number three says simplify x squared plus y squared in parentheses plus negative x squared plus y squared in parentheses. So as I mentioned, polynomials are nothing more than groups of algebraic terms. And in this case, uh, they use parentheses to show you that this x squared plus y squared is one of our polynomials. And this negative x squared plus y squared is another one of our polynomials. Well, uh, this addition sign in these parentheses don't really affect things. So Let's go ahead and copy this one down, but let's get rid of these parentheses since they really don't affect anything at all. This is x squared plus y squared plus negative x squared plus y squared. Uh, now that we have one big algebraic expression, all we have to do is go through it and combine like terms. Let's start with x squared. Again, our letter variable is x raised to the second power. Its corresponding like term is going to have x raised to the second power. We can see that that is right here. x squared minus x squared is nothing. So these x squareds just go away. Now we have y squared 
plus y squared. Again, if it's helpful, you can put that imaginary one in front of y squared. One y squared plus one y squared is gonna be two y squared. So in summing these two polynomials, you can see that our result is two y squared, which is answer choice D in this case. All right, so uh, number four says, what is the sum of two x squared minus six? 5x squared plus 2, and negative x squared minus 7. So in this case, it may not be obvious, but we are summing three polynomials together. Here is one of our polynomials. Here is our second polynomial. And here is our third polynomial. Again, when you sum polynomials, you just line them up, make one big algebraic expression via addition, and then combine like terms. So let's do that. We have 2x squared minus 6 plus, again, sum means plus, 5x squared plus 2 plus negative x squared minus 7. All right, so now all we have to do is go through this expression and combine like terms. So let's start with 2x squared. Its corresponding like term is going to have the letter variable x raised to the second power. You can see that that is there as well as there. 2x squared plus 5x squared is going to be 7x squared minus x squared is going to be 6x squared. All right, so now that we've combined those three like terms, let's go ahead and cross them out. As you can see now, we're just left with the whole numbers negative 6, positive 2, and negative 7. Negative 6 plus 2 is going to be uh, negative 4. Negative 4 minus 7 is going to be negative 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, negative 11. All right, so this one reduces to 6x squared minus 11, which is answer choice C in this case. So number five says, what is the sum of 8x squared plus 4x plus 3y squared plus y and 6x squared minus x plus 4y? All right, so in case it's not obvious, this is one of our polynomials and this is our second polynomial. In this case, we're being asked to find the sum of these two polynomials, which means we're just going to add them together. Uh, so that's going to look like this. 8x squared plus 4x plus 3y squared plus y. Again, we're finding the sum, so we're just going to add 6x squared minus x plus 4y. Now that we've created this big algebraic expression, we're going to go through it and combine our like terms. We have 8x squared. Again, its corresponding like term is going to be x raised to the second power. You can see that that is right here. 8x squared plus 6x squared is going to be 14x squared. Let's cross those out now that we've combined them. Uh, the next thing we have is 4x. Its corresponding like term is going to be x raised to the first power. You can see that that is right there. 4x minus x is going to be plus x. Then we have 3y squared. If you look through the rest of this expression, you can see that it doesn't have a corresponding like term. So we're going to drop that down as is. Let's cross this out. And then finally, we just have y and 4y. y plus 4y are like terms. y plus 4y is 5y. And just like that, we sum these two polynomials together. Now let's go ahead and select our correct answer choice. Uh, we have 14x squared. They all start with 14x squared plus 3x. Well, this is minus 3x and this is minus 3x plus 3y squared plus 3y squared plus 3y squared plus 5y. This is minus 5y, so we know that's not correct. Clearly, A is the correct answer choice. All right, so that is that one. Now that we've gotten some practice uh, adding polynomials, let's go ahead and take a look at an instance where we have to subtract polynomials. For number six, you can see it says uh, 3a minus 5 minus 5a plus 1. So again, that positive sign, or when we added polynomials, did not affect anything uh, that we were doing. But in this case, you want to pay close attention to what this negative sign is going to do. And let me show you that. First, let me copy this one down as is. We have 3a minus 5 minus 5a plus 1. 
Now, what are we going to do to simplify this? Well, first of all, we have to realize that these first set of parentheses don't do anything to these terms inside parentheses. So let's get rid of those parentheses. And then we have to realize that this negative has to get distributed to everything inside this second set of parentheses. So we're going to take this negative, we're going to multiply it here, and we're also going to multiply it here. So negative times positive 5a, again, a negative times a positive is going to be a negative, so this becomes minus 5a. And then we have negative times positive 1. A negative times a positive is a negative, so this is minus 1. All right, so now that we've distributed that negative sign, we have this big algebraic expression that we can simplify by going through it and combining like terms. Again, we have 3a and negative 5a as our like terms. 3a minus 5a is going to be negative 2a. Let's go ahead and cross those out. And we have negative 5 minus 1. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Cross those out. Negative 2a minus 6 is our answer in this case, and we can see that that is going to be answer choice B. All right, so again, when you subtract polynomials, you have to take that negative sign and distribute it to all the terms in your second polynomial. Otherwise, you will get these questions wrong. So for number seven, it says, what is 6xy minus 2x? Subtract it from 9xy plus y minus 2x. So in this case, uh, we have to pay very close attention to the wording in this question. First of all, it might be helpful to point out that this 6xy minus 2x is one of our polynomials, and this 9xy plus y minus 2x is another one of our polynomials. It says this, we're going to take 6xy minus 2x and subtract it from 9xy plus y minus 2x. Well, what's that look like algebraically? It looks like this, 9xy plus y minus 2x. From that, we're subtracting all the terms in this polynomial here. So that's going to be minus 6xy minus 2x. All right, so it should be pretty obvious at this point that in order to proceed, we have to take this negative and we have to distribute it here as well as here. If you do not do that, you will get this question wrong. All right. So again, this these first three terms do not change. So let's just copy them down as is. This is 9xy plus y minus 2x. Then let's multiply this negative sign to these two terms. Negative times positive 6x is negative 6xy. A negative times a negative 2x, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this becomes plus 2x. Now that we've created one big algebraic expression, all we have to do is go through it and combine like terms. Of course, let's start with 9xy. Like terms have the same letter variables raised to the same power. This is x raised to the first power, y raised to the first power. Its corresponding like term is right here, x raised to the first power, y raised to the first power. 9xy minus 6xy is simply 3xy. Let's go ahead and cross those out now. Uh, Right here, we just have plus y. It does not have a corresponding like term, so we'll just go ahead and bring it down as is and then cross it out. Then we have negative 2x plus 2x. This becomes 0, so it just goes away. So when we reduce this, it becomes 3xy plus y, which we can see is answer choice C in this case. All right, so that is that one. So number eight says simplify 8x squared minus 4x minus 3 minus negative 2x minus x squared plus 5. So again, we're subtracting two polynomials. This 8x squared minus 4x minus 3 is one of our polynomials. And this uh, negative 2x minus x squared plus 5 is our second polynomial. Uh, you should know that this first set of parentheses is not going to affect anything. So let's just copy that one down without the parentheses. This becomes 8x squared minus 4x minus 3. Again, this is minus negative 2x minus x squared plus 5. All right, so now we can go ahead and take this negative 
and distribute it to all the terms inside this set of parentheses here. This is going to be distributed here, here, and finally here. So let's copy down these first three terms. We know they're not changing yet. This is 8x squared minus 4x minus 3. Negative times negative 2x. A negative times a negative is a positive, so this becomes plus 2x. Negative times negative x squared. Negative times a negative is a positive, so this is plus x squared. Negative times a positive 5. A negative times a, neg a, negative times a positive is a negative, so this is minus 5. All right, now that we've created one big algebraic expression, we can go ahead and simplify it by combining like terms. 8x squared plus x squared is going to be 9x squared. Uh, negative 4x, and let's cross those out now that we've combined them. Negative 4x has a corresponding like term right here, 2x. Negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x. Let's go ahead and cross those out now. And then negative 3 minus 5 is going to be negative 8. All right, so when we simplify the subtraction of these two polynomials, we get 9x squared minus 2x minus 8, which you can see is answer choice D. All right, so that is that one. All right, so number 9 says, what is 7c squared plus c minus 8? Subtract it from the sum of 9c squared plus 5c minus 3 and c, c squared minus 7c minus 4. All right, so in this case, we're being asked to add and subtract polynomials. Uh, let's take care of this part right here. This is fairly easy. What is the sum of 9c squared plus 5c minus 3 and c squared minus 7c minus 4? Well, to add polynomials, we just line them up with an addition sign. So this becomes 9c squared plus 5c minus 3 plus c squared minus 7c minus 4. All right, so now that we've uh, summed these two polynomials, let's simplify this expression by combining like terms. That's going to make it much easier when it comes time to do this subtraction. So 9c squared has a corresponding ter like term right there. 9c squared plus c squared is going to be 10c squared. Let's cross these out. Then we have 5c and negative 7c. 5c minus 7c is negative 2c. Finally, we have negative 3 and negative 4. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. All right. So we just did this part. We found the sum of these two polynomials. Now it's asking us this. What is 7c squared plus c minus 8? Subtract it from the sum of these polynomials. Well, here's the sum. So from that, we're going to subtract this other polynomial, notably 7c squared plus c minus 8. And you may have noticed that I put that in parentheses because, as I've mentioned in this video multiple times, we're going to have to take this negative sign as our next step and distribute it here, here, and here. And unlike the addition sign, this negative sign is going to affect the signs of all these terms in parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that next. This is 10c squared minus 2c minus 7. Uh, negative times positive 7c squared becomes negative 7c squared. Again, a negative times a positive is a negative. Negative times positive c is negative c. Again, a negative times a positive is a negative. Negative times negative 8 is going to be positive 8. Again, a negative times a negative is a positive. All right, so now that we have this big expression here, we can go ahead and simplify it by combining like terms. We have 10c squared and negative 7c squared. 10c squared minus 7c squared is going to be 3c squared. Let's go ahead and cross these out now. Then we have negative 2c and negative c. Negative 2c minus c is negative 3c. Then we have negative 7 and positive 8. Negative 7 plus 8 is going to be positive 1. So uh, this subtracted from the sum of these two, as you can see, is 3c squared minus c, 3c plus 1. And we can see that that is going to be 
answer choice uh, D in this case. All right, so that is that one. So finally, we do have a word problem. It says this, the Perez family is filling their swimming pool. Their swimming pool holds 10 M squared plus 12 M minus 16 gallons of water. If the water truck has already delivered 7 M squared minus 8 M plus 12 gallons of water, then how many gallons of water must still be delivered to the pool? So we know the pool holds this amount of gallons of water and this amount of gallons have already been delivered. So to find the remaining amount, we're going to do subtraction. More specifically, we're going to subtract this amount from the amount of water that the pool holds. So it's going to look like this. 10 M squared plus 12 M minus 16 minus, again, we're going to be subtracting all the terms in this polynomial. So we have to use parentheses. 7 M squared minus 8 M plus 12. All right, again, that negative sign has to be distributed to all the terms in the second polynomial. So we're going to take it, we're going to multiply it here, here, and here. Again, these first three terms do not change, so let's just copy them down as is. This becomes negative times positive 7m squared. Again, a negative times a positive is a negative, so this is minus 7m squared. Negative times a negative is going to be a positive, so this becomes plus 8m. And a negative times a positive is a ne negative, so this is negative 12. Let's simplify this expression by combining like terms. We have 10m squared and negative 7m squared. 10m squared minus 7m squared is going to be 3m squared. Let's cross those out now. Then we have 12m and 8m. 12m plus 8m is going to be plus 20. M. Let's cross those out now. And then finally, we have negative 16 minus 12. Uh, you should be able to do that one in your head. Negative 16 minus 12 is going to be negative 28. So in other words, 3M squared plus 20M minus 28 gallons of water still have to be delivered to fill up the Perez's family pool. And we can see that that is answer choice C in this case. All right, so that is it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. And as usual, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comments section below. Uh, this topic does show up very frequently on the ASVAB. So make sure you can add and subtract uh, polynomials. Uh, adding polynomials is pretty simple and straightforward. That said, when you subtract polynomials, you have to pay very close attention to that negative sign since it is going to be distributed to all the terms in that second polynomial or that polynomial by which you're subtracting. Again, if you answered seven or more of these questions correctly, you probably have this topic in the bag and you can move on to studying something else. Otherwise, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have additional resources to help you understand this topic. More specifically, I have an algebra review playlist, which includes another video on combining like terms and adding and subtracting polynomials. I put links to both of those in the description of this video. And on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.